Hot Mike with Houston and Hogan features two radio professionals with over 100 years of broadcasting experience between them. Dave Hogan and Randy Houston are both native Western North Carolinians whose rich voices have been heard in every glade, cove, and holler of Western North Carolina and East Tennessee, primarily on AM radio. And between the two of them, they've worked in just about every radio format. As you can imagine, these guys have tons of stories about the day-to-day of live radio and the interactions they've had with listeners and entertainers while they were immersed in, at the time, one of the most influential and informative mediums available. Those experiences will be featured in this podcast series. Check the subscribe button wherever you get your podcasts with Randy and Dave on Hot Mike with Houston and Hogan. Hello and welcome to Hot Mike with Houston and Hogan. Randy Houston here, and it is always fun to gather around the microphone with my good friend, Dave Hogan. Dave Hogan is uh, a name that you've heard on the radio around Western North Carolina and Eastern Tennessee for many, many years. Uh, You've been retired longer than I've been in this business. No, 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 (laughs) no. But it does seem like uh, I have spent about half of my life correcting myself oh so last time we did a podcast we remembered the late jerry lee lewis right yes yes. and we talked about linda gale his sister and uh, i was trying to uh think of who she was married twice to amongst her eight marriages she was married (laughs) not to the musician kenny lovelace but to uh who who played in jerry lee's band but to Jerry Lee's manager, she was married twice to Cecil Harrelson, Jerry Lee's manager. Okay. So there you go. We got that fixed. and uh, well, I'll have to correct myself on something else here shortly, probably. <laughs> so don't go away, friends. Well, you, you probably won't get called on it because uh, today we're going to talk about dead people. Well, you know, in uh, 2020, I almost said 19. You're, have you slipped up and done that? Yeah. 2022 a year that we lost quite a few superstars in country music, as well as some uh, artists who were prominent, but maybe not superstars, as well as some people in the, in the background that the average uh, person in the uh, public wouldn't know. We did a show on, of course, we lost Loretta Lynn, and we, we talked about her. And last show, we talked about Jerry Lee Lewis, and I believe we did a show on Olivia Newton-John, right? Yes, yes. And we we mentioned Mickey Gilley, Jerry Lee's first cousin. He's died this uh, this past this year. And Mickey is quite a story. Mickey, I never did have the chance, the opportunity to meet Mickey Gilley. Me either. But he uh, brought back a lot of. He was on the Playboy record label. Yes. Yeah. I've the, forgotten that. Remember You're the right. Playboy label? Because you saw the Playboy logo on right. the records. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But remember uh, Bill Anderson's big hit, City Lights? Yes. Brought that back. He brought back uh, Room Full of Roses, which I believe is an old uh, George Morgan tune, and several other what you'd consider country classics. He revived these songs and brought them back. Window Up Above, which was a George Jones hit from years ago. And then Mickey Gilley uh, covered, as the industry says, they use that term, covered, the old soul song called Stand By Me, which was used in Urban Cowboy, the movie. And he knocked it out of the park. Oh, yeah. He did a great job on that Ben E. King hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did a great job. Stand by me. And Mickey owned Gilly's Nightclub in uh, Pasadena, Texas. And if I'm not mistaken, they filmed some of Urban Cowboy. Yes. At uh, Gilly's. They did. Outside of Houston. It's where the... uh, uh, Mechanical bull? Yes, thank you. That's exactly <laughs> where that thing came into play. Probably the second uh, most popular honky tonk in Texas. Probably Billy Bob's in Fort Worth. Been around 
Yeah. A lot of country artists have filmed shows at Billy Bob's. Yeah. Remember Merle Haggard? Do you remember this? Merle Haggard did a show at Billy Bob's, and there were something over 5,000 people in attendance when the Hag did that show. And for whatever reasons, went through his mind. He said, I want to buy everybody in the house a round of drinks. So he bought 5,000, over 5,000 round of drinks. And it came, his bill came to over $12,000. And he is in the Guinness Book of World Records for buying, <laughs> buying the most expensive round of drinks anybody ever bought. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, you story. wonder what got into Merle's mind to do that? Really? What in the world was I thinking? So Mickey Gilly, another one of Jerry Lee's first cousins, uh, sure made his mark. He had a fall. He was helping a friend move furniture. Don't know if you know this or not. And they were moving, uh, I think, a love seat. And he tripped and fell. And the love seat uh, came down on top of him and did some pretty bad damage and partially paralyzed one of his arms. And he couldn't play the piano very much after that. Oh. But Mickey died in 2022. And. I loved his music. I really did. Wish I could have known him. Another uh, artist that we've lost that a lot of people out there won't recognize, the name Dallas Frazier. Now, Dallas Frazier did a lot of recording, never had that big smash hit, but he wrote a lot of, in fact, other people covered his songs. The first one that he had success with was a little thing he wrote called Alley Oop. Alley oop boop boop by the Hollywood Argyles. I remember that. Yeah, it was a novelty song. But the song that he's best known for, one you can probably sing for us, Randy, Elvira by the That's Oak Ridge Boys. Right, I forgot about that. Boy, you're amazing. Elvira. Elvira, yes. And what a character, what a what an advertising campaign that all things spawned. Yes, Elvira. Yes. Yeah. But he uh, and, and Dallas recorded his own song. He'd had a cut on the song. And one of the Oak Ridge Boys, I can't remember which, maybe Dwayne Allen, who uh, heard uh, Dallas Frazier's recording of that several years before they recorded it. And he said, I just never could get it out of my mind. <laughs> so the Oak Ridge Boys recorded it. And as they say, the rest is history. It was a big, big, big hit. And that was Dallas Frazier I forgot about. I knew that, but I had forgotten it. <laughs> but Dallas Frazier also wrote some other country classics that you'll remember. Uh, one of them was, uh, I believe, Song of the Year one year by Jack Green called There Goes My Everything. There goes my reason for living. That there was goes a Dallas Frazier song. Yeah. Dallas also wrote Beneath Still Waters, Amy Lou Harris. Yes. And a slew of other songs. So we remember fondly the... Uh, work of dallas frazier oh man I'm, I'm really glad you've done this research today who else is on that pig list? robbins his name was hargus hargus pig robbins but he had uh the nickname of pig don't know how he got it but he was a pianist and a thousands of recordings have been made with pig robbins playing piano Blind man, a blind yes. piano player. Yes. There's something in that too. Uh, Ronnie Millsap or Ray Charles and the the blind and the blind piano player <laughs> that can hear so much. Pig Robbins was that kind of person. Sat in on so many recording sessions. Yeah, I heard I heard somebody say one time that practically everybody who uh, recorded in Nashville. Their number one request for a piano player was Pig Robbins. Yeah. Couldn't always get him because he stayed so busy. Another uh, artist we lost was Warner Mack. Remember, the bridge washed out and, and I, I can't, can't swim, swim and my baby's, baby's on, on the, the other, other side. side. His name was Warner McPherson, but shortened to just the Warner Mack for okay. recording purposes. Okay. But Warner Mack had a good run, not, not a superstar. But he had some significant recordings 
uh, back in the 1960s mainly. Also, we lost in 2022 Bobby Nelson. And Bobby was uh, Willie Nelson's sister and his piano player for, for, I guess, from the beginning. Yeah. From the very beginning. Yeah, very, very childish beginning, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bobby Nelson. There are several of Willie's recordings trying to think of one right now, but I can't, that she does a lot of piano work on. Uh, Seems to me like maybe it's a gospel song that she does a long break in the middle. Beautiful piano work. Uh, Willie often spoke about Sister Bobby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ralph Emery, well-known disc jockey. For many, many years, uh, disc jockey and then TV uh, host. Right. Uh, I met Ralph one time. No, I met Ralph twice. When uh, Ralph was at his most popular during the years that he did the all-night show on WSM. You know, WSM had that big 50,000-watt signal that covered much of the United States. 6.50 6.50 a.m. And when Went Ralph everywhere. was there, country music was just making what I call its big comeback. Yep. Just becoming popular again. But there weren't too many radio stations around the country playing country music. Yeah. So Ralph started the show about midnight and worked all night and established a tremendous audience. And all the country music artists wanted to get on the show to promote their music. Yep. But Ralph uh, was hired by uh, a promoter who promoted a country music show in Asheville that I emceed. Keith Fowler, I guess it was. Keith uh, Fowler promoted a lot of country music. And I believe Keith's son managed the uh, band Alabama. But anyway, he got Ralph to come on the tour and do the MC work. And I said, I am seated, and here, here is uh, how that happened. Ralph opened the show, maybe introduced the first act and the second act. And he came over to me and he said, uh, you know, you're a disc jockey. You may understand this. But he said, when I have a little time off, I want to sleep. Would you mind emceeing the rest of the show and let me go back to the hotel and sleep? <laughs> I said, I understand, Ralph. I understand. So that was my conversation with Ralph backstage at the Asheville City Auditorium. This is an old DJ needing a nap. I know. Yeah, yeah. doing that all night show. He said, when I have any time off, I want to sleep. Hey, Amen. Then uh, after he left the uh, all night show, uh, even before he left the all-night show, he was doing some TV, and he had a um, morning TV show on uh, WSM in Nashville, <laughs> WSM TV, and um, also did a lot of other country music specials. Also, we lost William Freeze. Oh, uh, you got me scratching my head there, Dave. Stage name, C.W. McCall. Okay, we got us a convoy. We got us a convoy. And the old home filler up and keep on trucking cafe. <laughs> <clears throat> C.W. Came, McCall came along in the at the height of the CB craze. Right. Yeah. Did you ever have a CB radio? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody had a CB radio. Everybody I believe did. everybody. I do, too. Funny story, <clears throat> Gina, my daughter, was in school at the time at uh, Country Day School out on Hendersonville Road. And when she had an extracurricular activity, I would uh, pick her up in the, you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock uh, time frame. And I had a membership down at the YMCA. Now, I was doing the morning show at the time, getting up early. And for some reason, I hadn't slept in a couple of nights, and I was tired, and I jogged a little bit around the track and went into the steam room, which I loved. And this is, by this time, it's about 2 o'clock. And I think I, they had a nap room. 
about the size of the radio studio here, had a nap room, and it was completely dark. You'd go in there and take a nice nap, and you could tell Clyde, who was the manager, I don't remember Clyde's last name, Clyde would come wake you up. Well, I failed to tell Clyde to wake me up. Uh oh. So I went in and took my nap, and I woke up. <laughs> and you could, it was totally dark in that room, except you could see a little sliver of light under the door. And you could hear a basketball bouncing in the distance <laughs> in the gym upstairs. You know how it is when you wake up from a nap, you lay there for a couple of minutes, and I didn't hear a basketball bouncing. I don't see any light under that door. So I jumped out of there, and I had to fumble and make my way. I didn't have any lights at all. Make my way out to the locker area. Finally found my locker where my clothes and everything were. I got my wristwatch out. One o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I slept from like two o'clock in the afternoon to one o'clock the next morning. And I can't, and I'm locked in here. And I was locked in and I couldn't get out. And I thought, well, I'll call. And I, the, the telephone was locked. They had the, they had the, the, the receiver locked down and I couldn't pick up the phone. But I found, finally, you know, your eyes adjusted. Right. And I could see a little bit. And I found a door that would open from the inside. And let me out of here. And so I got out. <laughs> now, why are you? Why am I bringing that up and talking about C, CB, CB radios? I lived on Patton Mountain at the time. And when I drove up to uh, the house, there were three or four cars in my driveway and CB radios just cracking. <laughs> <laughs> they Dave. were putting a search party together to go look for me. <laughs> Where's Dave? <laughs> yeah, we hadn't seen him since and yesterday. But have you seen Dave Hogan? He's driving a Subaru, a little red Subaru. <laughs> Ten four. That's a funny story. Uh, he goes up on the parkway a lot. He may have taken a hell. Uh, he may have wrecked up on the parkway. Ain't no need to go up there now and look for him because if he run off the parkway, <laughs> we ain't gonna find him. Boy, better might as well wait till daylight. Oh, oh gosh. So you talk about embarrassment when I just showed up like nothing had happened. <laughs> Where you been? And my daughter will never let me forget that. Sitting out there at country day school, waiting on Pop to pick her up. <laughs> He's asleep in the wire. Uh, sleep in the wire. Okay, let's move along. Uh, C.W. McCall had that big hit called Convoy. Yeah. And then the old home filler up and keep on trucking cafe. And William Fries or Fries, I'm not sure which was his real name, and he was an advertising executive. That was his main job, and I think uh, got the idea for the convoy through uh, advertising campaign he was doing for some client. So he wrote it. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, that's amazing. Yeah, still play that one as a classic every now and then on whkp 107.7 fm where i do mornings i played that song not long ago and a lot of other songs stemmed from the cb radio yeah days can you think of any red sylvine what was the one he had? oh giddy up giddy up go, go. Yeah, giddy up giddy go. Up go yeah yeah uh gosh yeah red sylvine trying to think of any others uh Another person we lost this year, uh, and I never did get to meet uh, the Judds, but Naomi Judd. We I, lost Naomi. Yes, we did. And, and I was uh, privileged to MC a show and introduce the Judds at uh, the Asheville Civic Center some 20, 30 years after you were there at City Auditorium. Very nice ladies. They were on a roll when uh, they were coming through Asheville. I mean, they had hit song after hit song, man, and uh, the crowd loved them. And, of course, there was Naomi and her two daughters, Winona, who sang with her, and Ashley. Ashley went west to seek her fortune, and she found it as an actress in Hollywood. Her name was brought up prominently at her uh, at her uh, request, 
when they started investigating Harvey Weinstein. Yes. Uh, she was not a victim of his because she told him to, you know, mm -hmm. she, she got away from him. But Harvey Weinstein was the famous TV producer who uh, allegedly, I think, was convicted of, of uh, several counts of uh, misconduct with women. And Ashley tells a story of trying to break into the music business and was to meet him at a hotel and she went up to the receptionist. I'm here for a meeting with Mr. Weinstein. He's in his room. He requests that you come to his room. And she said, that was kind of a red flag for this Kentucky girl. <laughs> 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 and uh, she was able to uh, get out of there with no harm done. But she came to the forefront when this investigation began and testified of her experience. But the judge had a harmony that is hard to duplicate. Family harmony you cannot duplicate. Amen. Um, and such talent in those, those people, uh, mother and those, both those daughters. And uh, Winona is still out touring uh, and uh, such an incredible singer. They're all such talented people. And it's no secret because they've talked about it. Uh, Naomi took her own life. She suffered for years from depression. Right. And there's been a stigma for so many years attached to just the word depression. And I think Winona and uh, Ashley are both trying to bring attention to the fact that anyone can suffer from depression because no matter your status or your station in life. Uh, and, of course, the average person will look at the success that the judge had and continue to have with, I'm sure, a lot of royalty residuals and say, well, what's she got to be depressed about? Got two nice daughters and got a nice home and husband whom they called Pop. What's she got to be depressed about? Is there such a thing as clinical depression? Right. No respecter of people. Or position in life. Or position in life. Yep. So we miss Naomi. Yes. Another uh, country music industry person we lost was Jim Owens. Now, here's another name that most people may not recognize, but he was a TV producer. And I think every country music fan remembers Laurie Ann Crook and... Uh, um, Charlie Chase. Charlie Chase from over in Rogersville, Tennessee, originally. Uh, Jim Owens was married to Lori Ann, and he died this year. And also, just recently, Jeff Cook of Alabama. What an incredible musician. Yes. And what an incredible group. I remember the disc jockey convention in Nashville when it was really a DJ convention before it became, um, country radio seminar. And, and yeah. Country radio seminar and the other things. Don't know what they call it now, but in October they had a, a real true disc jockey convention where most of the people attending were DJs. And I remember members of Alabama standing in the lobby of the Andrew Jackson Hotel, meeting the DJs and <laughs> handing out copies of their first recording. Fast forward 20-some years, I went to the country radio seminar in Nashville, and backstage there was Alabama. They, one of the tours that we took was to the Ryman Auditorium as a class in that seminar, and backstage was the group Alabama. Of course, they were giants in the industry by then, but they were still back there meeting, <laughs> greeting, shaking hands, and talking to DJs because they knew that's where they get their music played. Exactly. Uh, as you said, he was a, a fine uh, musician and, of course, one of the Jeff. founding members of the band Alabama from Fort Payne, Alabama. Jeff uh, was, guess what Jeff did in high school as a part-time radio guy. He got hooked on the local AM radio station in Fort Payne, Alabama, 
he uh, was such a musician as a child, child prodigy musician. Then uh, the group Alabama came along, and he made some money, and he went back and bought that radio station in wow. Fort Payne, Alabama, a small AM station, ran and operated it for several years, got his first class ticket. What we talk about in the industry of radio is uh, uh, the first class engineer's license. And uh, I never achieved that level myself. I'm a, I'm a third class radio operator. and uh, But this first ticket, well, Jeff Cook had it, and, and that means he could fix the transmitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, what it <laughs> basically means and uh, he was a radio junkie. Means he gets called every time something happens at the radio station. <laughs> That's right. So we don't want that Every job. time something goes wrong, you call the engineer. Um, that band was known as Wild Country before yeah. Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, really, really got their start at a, a place in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina called the Bowery. And they played in the Bowery at Myrtle Beach for many years and got discovered. Yeah, and they changed the name, I believe. Of the, they had their own club for a long, or, or their own venue, not really a club, but their own venue called Alabama. Yes, that later on in years, yes, uh, it was built and maybe still operating in Myrtle Beach. Jeff had Parkinson's disease. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Sure he did. And that's, uh, let's see, let me go through these. Dallas Frazier, Pig Robbins, Warner Mack, Bobby Nelson, Ralph Emery, C.W. McCall, Mickey Gilly, Olivia Newton, John Loretta Lynn, Naomi Judd, Jim Owens, and Jeff Cook. All, and of course, Jerry Lee Lewis that we've talked about. All the uh, artists that we've lost in 2022. Well, Dave, thank you for uh, researching that list and bringing back some names and songs and memories that we all have of uh, the the greats of country. And uh, we're losing more and more of those every day. And it's sad to say, I got to say this before we get out of here, you know, I always become a renewed fan of that person's music when they pass away. I always immediately go to jeff cook and the group alabama i've been playing a lot of alabama stuff it just brings it to your mind of how great they were and you know jerry lee lewis we talked about him on our last podcast things happen by happen now listen to this line things happen by happenstance okay <laughs> it happens jerry lee lewis was partially <laughs> responsible for the green green grass of home becoming a worldwide multi-million selling hit he recorded that you know uh, i'm trying to remember so many did uh but first i believe it was johnny darrell maybe then porter wagner, porter wagner recorded the green green grass of home tom jones and then jerry Lee lewis put it on an album okay? okay tom jones is in new york and he wants he's on the uh the uh, Sullivan show, Ed Sullivan show. He goes to a record store and he wants to know, do you have anything new from Jerry Lee Lewis? And Jerry Lee's album had just come out that had his cut of Green Green Grass of Home. And Tom Jones was captivated by the song. He went back to Wales or wherever he was living at the time and he recorded it and it became an international yes. hit. Yes, across. The, yeah. Yeah. And you think if he hadn't have gone into <laughs> that record store that day and bought that Jerry Lee Lewis album, we may have, the, the, the whole world may not have heard the Green Green, Green Grass Green. of Home, which yeah. was written by Curly Putnam. Really? The late Curly Putnam. Who wrote a bunch of songs. Who wrote a lot of songs. And we lost Curly, I guess, um, a couple of years ago. All right, thank you all so much for tuning in. Randy Houston and Dave Hogan on Hot Mike with Houston and Hogan. Be sure to click the subscribe button for another episode of Hot Mike with Randy Houston and Dave Hogan.